In this video, I will be showing one of the ways in which a tileable material can be applied to a 3D model. The techniques used to texture this model can also be applied to many different other types of models. This video serves as a basic example on how something like this can be done. For this bridge model, I first focused on creating the main shape of the model. At this stage, the main focus is to make the model without worrying too much about the texturing process. For the bridge model, I simply created a rectangle and also cylindrical objects which I used to create the main shape. The cylinders in this case were used through a boolean operation to extract the main shape of the bridge. After I had the main shape, I cleaned up some of the geometry by removing any unnecessary geo as well as connecting different vertices. I also made some extrusions at the bottom and the top. These extrusions were done to create some stone arches which you typically see on these types of structures. I also created a cube and shaped it to be used as a pillar which would go on each corner of the model. At this point, I also cut the model in half in order to focus just on one side of the bridge. Later on, this will be mirrored to create the entire structure. Once I was done modeling, I opened the UV window and started to apply cuts to the model. I also added an extra edge loop at the bottom, which I had previously deleted. I added this back because this will make it easier to map the arch section to the texture. I proceeded to cut some of the sections. In this case, I cut them in a way in which it made sense to have these things separated. The arches are separate from the main body and the top floor and bottom are also separate. I also made sure to straighten UVs for the arch section as this will be important in order to be able to match the UVs to the brick texture. Finally, I made the UVs for the column, making sure to also keep it relatively straight. Once the first pass for UVs was done, I created and assigned a new material to the model. In this case, I applied the ambient occlusion map to the color map, mainly because it made it a lot easier to visualize some of the details in the texture. With the texture applied to the model, I also changed the size of the UV shells to have the same texel density throughout. If you're wondering what texel density is and how to set it up, I will leave a link in the video description which explains how to do this in detail and how to set up texel density. Now that the texture could be previewed in the viewport, I moved the UV shells in order to align them to the texture in a way in which they look okay on the model. How and where you place the UV shells will depend on the tile level texture you are using. In this case, I'm using this bricks texture which also has some pipes going across it. If you would like to use this specific texture, I will leave a link in the video description for you to download it. After moving the UVs to where I thought they looked good, I proceeded to export the model as an FBX file and import it into Marmoset Toolbag. In Marmoset Toolbag, I created a material and applied all the maps to it. I assigned this material to the model. The reason I did this was to be able to preview the material on the model and get a better view of how this was looking. You can also do the same on the final program you're looking to use the model in, for example something like Unreal Engine or Unity. Being able to go back and forth is very useful to be able to see what the final model will look like with the material applied. Back in Maya, I decided to add some geometry where the metal pipes are. I did this to make this section of the model not look too flat. This is a very common technique to use when using tileable or trim textures. In this process, it is essential to keep going back and forth between your modeling program and the final program where you will render the model and adding geometry details where needed. Once I was happy with the placement of the UVs and how the texture looked on the model, I proceeded to mirror the model. I then continued to go back and forth between Maya and Marmoset as I adjusted the UVs. Finally, to give the model more visual interest, I decided to add a few more details. In this case, I added a guardrail. Notice how for the metallic piece, I simply mapped the UVs to where the metal pipes on the texture are. In this case, to make it align better, I had to scale the UVs of the metal rail a little bit. I used a deformer on it and completed the modeling by mirroring this section as well. 
So this is how you can go about using tileable textures or trim textures and apply them to a 3D model. Keep in mind that this was just a basic example and you can definitely continue to add more details to the model, such as adding more geometry to the bricks to make the model be less flat. Let me know if anything in this video was not clear and if you like this video I invite you to hit the like button as well as check out some of the other videos on this channel.